a weirdly common problem in Final Fantasy XIV, possibly especially because of the age of the game combined with the amount of changes the game has got over the years, is that some players will claim that something is true without ever checking if it actually is, either because they assumed it is the way they think or because it was like that at some point. In this video, I will both highlight some of the most common misconceptions and use them as examples as to how you can test your claims and understandings of the game, so you also know how to science stuff in Final Fantasy XIV. Number 1. Provoke does not generate additional enmity. To start, this requires that you either ignore the tooltip itself or assume it is incorrect. With that said, Provoke has generated at least 2000 potencies worth of enmity since at least Shadowbringers and was further buffed in Endwalker. On my most recent estimate, it generates at least 4000 potencies worth of enmity. Now, how do you demonstrate that Provoke generates enmity? Grab your favorite friend, have them smack around a striking dummy for a little bit while you are in party with them, then simply use Provoke on the same striking dummy. If Provoke does not generate additional enmity beyond, like, the one point needed to put you ahead, then these bars, which indicate how much enmity you have relative to each other, should both be essentially full. But as you can see here, me using Provoke puts me significantly ahead. Number 2. Provoke does not work if you are already the target of the enemy. I mean, this isn't a particularly important distinction, aside from the fact that if this were true, you wouldn't be able to use Provoke in place of a ranged attack when pulling multiple mobs at once, since the enemies would target you first, right? But how would one test this? Well, simply use Provoke on something that is already targeting you, and watch the bars. Number 3. Determination does not boost healing from abilities. This one is a misconception I myself fell for at one point, mainly through hearsay. The misconception typically stems from the fact that the tooltip for determination itself says spells. However, this is incredibly simple to demonstrate. Find a spell and an ability that heals for the same potency. If you have a decent amount of determination, like I do, then if this is a true statement, then the healing spell will heal for about 10% more than the ability consistently. Simply observe that they heal for approximately the same. Number 4. Guaranteed critical hits draw extra benefit from the critical hit stat. Another one I myself made the mistake of assuming to be true. The misconception might stem from the fact that the direct hit stat does work exactly like described here. However, the direct hit stat tooltip also states this outright, which the critical hit stat does not. Now, how do we demonstrate this claim? With Monk. Dragon Kick is a 320 potency attack, while Leaden Fist Boosted Bootshine is a 310 potency attack. If Bootshine, which is a guaranteed critical hit, does draw more benefit from the critical hit stat, then Leaden Fist Bootshines would lead to bigger critical hits than critical hit Dragon Kicks, even with a 10 potency difference. This also means that if it is not true, then Dragon Kick critical hits will on average beat critical hit Leaden Fist Boot Shines, which is what actually happens. As a little bonus info, critical hit rate boosting buffs are added additively to your critical hit damage on guaranteed critical hits. At least according to my tests, which involved a lot of Samurai Midara Setsu Gekkas with a dancer friend applying Devilment. Number 5. Healing magic potency boosting buffs affect all healing. Let's start this one by showing the distinction in buff descriptions. Temperance and Neutral sects state they boost healing magic potency by 20%. Krasis and Protraction increases HP recovery via healing actions by 20 and 10% respectively. Temperance and Neutral Sect allegedly only boost spells, and Krasis and Protraction boosts all healing. To prove these claims, we first determine the average healing of any one healing spell and ability for each of the four healers. Then we simply use the appropriate cooldown and take note of whether it actually increased the healing of each of these spells and abilities. You can see here that while Cure 2's healing is boosted by Temperance, Tetragrammaton's is not. 
This also applies for Benefic 2 with neutral state, but not with essential dignity. For protraction, physic is affected and so is lustrate. For classes, diagnosis is affected and so is Ryuholi. This test should be sufficient to apply to other similarly described effects such as Fey Illumination or Mantra. Number 6. There is no such thing as physical or magical damage specific damage buffs. It's simply flavor and doesn't translate to actual game mechanics. This one builds on the previous claim and stems from a combination of a straight up misunderstanding and also the fact that since Monk's Brotherhood was changed from physical specific in late Shadowbringers and Paladin's Fight or Flight was changed in the same way in mid Endwalker, the only job effects that specifically target physical or magical damage in this way are the personal part of Red Mage's Embolden, which only boosts magic damage, and Black Mage's Enochian trait. For Black Mage, this is completely inconsequential unless you're trying to produce the biggest Black Mage auto attack ever conceived. However, this does matter for Red Mage, and is also what we will be using to prove that this isn't just flavor. Red Mage has a surprisingly wide selection of physical attacks. By that I don't mean weapon skills, but rather attacks that do physical damage, signified by the blue blade next to the damage. A significant amount of these aren't meant to be used in their physical variant, as they are intended to be used in their enchanted variants that do magic damage. However, Flesh, Contre Sixth, Core a core, engagement and displacement are all intended to be used in their physical incarnations, as they don't have magic variants. We can demonstrate that Red Mage's Embolden does not increase physical damage for the Red Mage itself simply by denoting the average damage of these attacks in our current equipment, then using Embolden and testing again, observing that the average damage is unchanged. A bonus side effect of this is that if two red mages use embolden simultaneously, they will benefit from each other's raid buff, since their personal buff is unique. Number 7. Dot snapshotting is not in Final Fantasy XIV. To start, dot snapshotting means that when you apply a damage over time effect, your damage boosting buffs and your target's debuffs that increase damage taken are recorded and impact the total damage of the dot so that these buffs or debuffs ending, or even new buffs and debuffs being added to the equation does not change the dot's damage over time throughout its duration. The dot takes a so called snapshot of the current battle state when it is applied. This kind of mechanic is not universally applied to all games of course, as such you cannot simply assume that it is in a game at a glance. However, we can always test this. All we need is a job with both a dot and a damage buff. We apply Stormbite and Caustic Bite to the target, observing the damage. Then use Raging Strikes, observing that the damage is unchanged as expected. Then reapply Stormbite and Caustic Bite and observe the damage change. Then we observe that the damage does not drop back down once Raging Strikes ends, proving that dot snapshotting exists. This of course also works with dots applied by enemies to you, so if a boss applies a big dot to the raid, then once the dot is already up, it is far too late to apply damage reduction. The most clear way to demonstrate this interaction is with the PvP action Guard. If a scholar applies biolysis to someone before they use Guard, then the dot will continue to do full damage throughout Guard. If on the other hand biolysis is applied, during guard, then the dot will only do a fraction of its damage, even after guard ends. Number 8. Reprisal and by extension other damage reduction debuffs only works if the debuff is applied before the cast begins in the first place. I'm not entirely sure how this kind of claim came about, but it did. This is very easily proven false. Walk up to any mob with a casted action. Get hit by the attack as is, denote the damage. Then, when the enemy casts the attack again, use reprisal in the middle of the cast and observe that the damage was reduced, disproving the claim. The way buffs work in Final Fantasy XIV is that speed adjusting buffs, like ley lines, need to be active at least before the cast starts. After that, the buff can run out just fine with no change. 
For damage affecting buffs and debuffs, they need to be active when the attack resolves, which is around when the cast finishes itself, or up to half a second before, the so-called slide cast window where the game has already acknowledged the attack finished. Instant actions resolve immediately, even those that take a long time to display their damage. Number 9. The wait command for macros can take any number, even decimal numbers. This can be very easily tested. Here I have a macro that casts burst shot every 2.5 seconds, or at least it says it does. Note that my GZD is 2.5 exactly, so this macro should cast burst shot exactly on the GZD if it works. Observe then that it takes a good half a second before each subsequent burst shot comes out. Next, here I have changed the macro to cast every 2.49 seconds, and then equipped gear to have a GCD of 2.47 instead. Everything should work with just a moment of delay then, right? Let's try again, and observe that after 2 seconds, not 2.5, the not yet ready error appears, because the macro failed to cast burst shot. Why is this? Because the wait command rounds to the nearest integer, whole number with 0.5 rounding up, meaning 2.49 is rounded to 2.0 and 2.50 is rounded to 3. This is also what gives rise to how all the crafting macros work, where they choose between 2 or 3 seconds. It's not because it's easier to write it that way or to be sure, it's because decimals are off the table entirely. Number 10. Tenacity increases healing received. To disprove this one, you need a healer friend. Simply have them cast a basic healing spell on you repeatedly. Then try and remove tenacity from your gear, either by unequipping gear entirely or by replacing them with gear that has less tenacity. Notice how the healing stays the same? This misunderstanding of tenacity could stem from the fact that the tooltip itself just says HP restored, which leaves the question of by who? Unanswered. It is also much more likely for people to simply assume things when the test itself requires another person. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can let the YouTube algorithm know by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing, sharing, and hitting the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, the PvP action Guard is distinctly unique among damage reduction effects, because several other PvP actions specifically name Guard and have some sort of interaction with it. Although usually the interaction is that they ignore it, which I suppose is exactly the opposite of interaction.